Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello everyone, welcome. I'm Nick. I'm Mike. And today we're going to be going over the 2022 Washington Commanders salary review and off-season moves. The football team. Look, tough team. Real tough team. Had a little bit of lackluster defense last year, which is kind of concerning to me, considering I think they had a lot of talent. And I, you know me, Mike. I'm a Raiders fan. I'm a huge fan of Jack Del Rio. I'm a big fan of Ron Rivera. Two defensive-minded guys. A little shot that their defense underperformed. What was that? Defense stunk. I'm not going to come out and say it nicely. That was ter- that was a terrible defensive performance by a team that honestly may have the best defense on paper. Yeah. So right now, know. right now we have a foot. Uh, the Commanders. They're going to be trying to build up their offense for sure. That's definitely a necessity of theirs. Uh, the, the defense on paper does not look terrible. But we're going to hop into this right now. We're going to go to the first line and show you their uh, their breakdown here. So Mike, go ahead with their salary yeah. cap. All right, so they got $30.3 million available in cap room, which is very good. So if we look at the players in green, so let's look at Landon Collins for a minute. $6.6 million. If you were to release Landon Collins, you would free that up in your cap room. So you would add that $6.6 million to your cap space. Now, if we go look at a player like Jonathan Allen, if they were going to release him, they would lose $16.5 million in their cap space. So you would take 16 and a half away from the 30.3. Yes, absolutely. So again... The main key here is typically guys with big numbers in green are possible cut candidates, and guys in red are guys that you probably don't want to cut. I don't know why you would want to cut someone like Chase Young or Jonathan Allen or Jamin Davis or Samuel Cosme anyway. But, again, these are guys that really uh, you don't want to cut because you'll lose money towards your cap. So, look, here it is right here. This is what we got. These are the guys that are currently under contract. And these are the guys that you can cut and save money or cut and lose money. So anybody that's not listed here is going to be shown on the next slide under your notable losses, possible free agents. Mike, take it away. Okay, so looking at the notable losses, but before I get into it, I got to thank our numbers guy. He figures out the expected salaries and the percentage of snap played. No, the three-quarter inch piece of copper, Thompson. Always comes in clutch for us. I just got to thank you, buddy. Now, Brandon Sharif, guard, his expected salary is a three-year, $50.1 million deal, and he played 61.8% of the snaps this year. Then we got Tim Settle, defensive tackle, one year, $4.25 million, and he played 19% of the snaps. We got quarterback Ryan Fitzmagic. Um, His expected salary is a one-year, $7 million deal. He only played 1.4% of the snaps. We got Cornelius Lucas, left tackle his expected deal is a two-year five million dollar deal he played 52.1 percent of the snaps and we got running back jd mckissick um his expected salary is a two-year five million dollar deal and he played 30.4 percent of the snaps all right so typically a good rule of thumb is guys that play a high percent of the snaps are usually guys that are brought back especially if they played well and besides that we'll see what we bring back to the next slide on the potential targets all right, here we go. We got potential targets, okay? And we're going to take a swing here. Uh, I, we're actually did something for you that we don't do for many teams, and we only did it for a few teams last year, actually. I'm seeing it now. I forgot about this. And another thing real fast, the reason I know I remember why we did this. So real fast, let's look at our estimated cuts. We're cutting Matt Ian Dynas for $6.9 million, which means you're going to save $6.9 million. We got restructures listed here. Now listen, this is why the reason why we did it, and I actually forgot about this before we did this right now. Landon Collins and Eric Flowers. The reason why we're restructuring, and we don't ever do restructures, but the reason why we're doing it for this team only is because typically when you trade for a guy, what you see down here, Jimmy Garoppolo, okay, uh, usually it depends how the teams write it up, but the Niners can take half the salary from Jimmy Garoppolo and put it on their cap hit. But instead of doing that, because we didn't do that for the Niners video, we just had you restructuring a few contracts. So we have you saving $3.5 million with Landon Collins, and saving $6 million with Eric Flowers. These two deals honestly make it reasonable. Eric Flowers is not worth $10 million, and there's a lot of reports that he's probably going to be worth $4 or $5 million, and he's going to be willing to take the restructure. Same thing with Landon Collins. He's not worth around $6 or $7 million. He's more worth around $2.5, $3 million this year, and they can convert the rest of the signing bonus. You guys are very lucky that we're doing this if we don't do this for any other team. This puts you at $46.7 million in estimated cap space available. Estimated signs. We get you guys bringing back Brandon Schreff. Uh, to a three-year $50.1 million deal, which is a $16.7 million cap. It also Cornelius Lucas to a two-year $5 million deal, which is a $2.5 million cap. It. On top of that, we got you bringing in bid linebacker Devondre Campbell to a two-year $18 million deal. 
which is a $9 million cap hit. This costs a total of $28.2 million, plus or a mock trade. Okay, mock trade sitting around pick for Jimmy Garoppolo, which counts as around $25, $26, $27 million is his cap hit right around there, which puts you right around $0 million left. You look here, team needs. You need a quarterback, you need a wide receiver, a tight end, an interior offensive lineman, a linebacker, a cornerback, a safety. Now, this is according to PFF. Um, really, tight end? I don't believe so. So we got you guys maybe drafting a backup or something, but it's really not a huge team need in our opinion. You see here, we got you re-signing Brandon Sheff to fill in that interior offensive lineman need. We got you trading for Jimmy Garoppolo to fill in the quarterback need. And then down here, you see, we got you, oh, and signing Devondre Campbell to fill in that linebacker need. Down here, you see draft picks, okay? You draft in the first round, someone like Drake London in the first round to fill in that wide receiver need. And in the third round, bringing in safety Lewis Sign, Lewis Seen, uh, to fill in that safety need, okay? And another third round pick and fourth round, we don't really know what you guys are going to do yet, uh, we'll, but we'll wait and see. So let's hop in now to your 2022-2023 expected depth chart. Mike, go ahead. Okay, so let's start this off with the green. So we look at the, uh, Devondre Campbell. That is a player that you signed in free agency. So you sign him, he's an immediate starter. Now you go to the pink, Jimmy Garoppolo. That's the tra player you traded for and you brought in. You go to orange is Brandon Sheriff. Um, that is a re-sign. So the orange is a re-sign. He comes in and takes his role right back over. And then the guys in the light blue, Drake London and Lewis uh, sign. Those are both rookies who are going to come in and play right away for you. Drake, I think Drake London is a great fit in this offense. And then we go over to yellow. Yellow is a placeholder where we think you can personally improve in, but – you're out of money in the cap room. So William Jackson looks like he's going to be staying unless somebody else is drafted. Yeah. Um, and again, look, th this is, if you take a swing with Jimmy Garoppolo, right, you're going to be paying him a lot of money. And it looks like a lot of reports are saying they want a big guy. So this is going to be one of the big guys that are going to be available this year, really. Um, but you look at this team overall, it's really pretty dang decent. Okay. It's a really decent roster. Jimmy Garoppolo with, Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, and Drake London, and Logan Thomas. That is a lot of weapons. That is a lot of weapons. And their offensive line is pretty dang good, too, okay? Eric Flatter's really saved his career there as a left guard. Antonio Gibson's a solid running back. I would love to see them get the ball to him more in multiple ways. Uh, cornerback Kendall Fuller played good this year. William Jackson kind of struggled. Two really good edge rushers and Chase here and Monte Sweat. Uh, you see Landon Collins and Lewis Seen there going to be filling in back and forward, playing both of them, letting them both have a little bit of snaps, especially if they play a little bit of nickel. Jamin Davis, Devondre Campbell, Cole Holcomb. Hopefully they can do pretty good. And Cameron Curl, someone that is a favorite in the Washington Commanders. Mike, what do you think? They went 7-10 last year. If they make these moves, what do you think on this team? Jimmy Garoppolo, I mean, a lot of people might not think this because there, he, there is an argument about Jimmy Garoppolo. There's a dispute. Some people like him, some people don't. But he makes this team a lot better. Um, I think they can th – th this honestly make, kind of makes them a contender in this division because the NFC East struggles and struggles and struggles. If the defense can play at the level they're supposed to play at, I'm looking at Jack Del Rio. I mean, I like Jack Del Rio, but I don't know. He's got to get that figured out over there. But if the defense plays at a high level, with, with these weapons, Jimmy Garoppolo can succeed and make a playoff push. He's, he's honestly been a winner everywhere he's ever gone. So I like the Jimmy Garoppolo move if Washington decides to go that route. I can see them winning 10 games. I really can, especially if the defense performs. Absolutely. As you said, it's going to come down Jack Del Rio and Ron Rivera, right? We're yeah. even saying Jack Del Rio. We know Ron Rivera has a huge say on this defense. I mean, he's also a former linebacker. He has both old school linebackers. I love both of them a lot, but they got to show something this year. Uh, Brandon Jimmy Garoppolo gives them a chance, right? Going 7-10 and 10 with Taylor Heineke is not bad. I'm going to be honest. Just that their defense needs to be a little bit better, and that's going to help them, and especially if you bring in Jimmy Garoppolo, someone like Drake London, it could really, really work out well. 10 wins is really not not really something crazy, okay? Uh, Commander fans, this team can be pretty dang good. It's going to be hard for me to get used to saying Commander, man. We had to go through so many names in the last few seasons. Man, is it driving me nuts. Let's hope this one sticks. Uh, but overall, look, this team, solid team on paper. I hope to see them win a few games. I would love to see them win eight, nine games. I really think that if they don't win nine games this year, you got to start looking at the coaching. And I hate saying that because I do love both these coaches, but you got to start looking there at that point. Ladies and gentlemen, let us know what you think in the comment section below. So much more to come. Mike, we are. Hope better. See you guys soon. Peace.